Oh, all right. Hey, guys. Um, I'm Devin. I'm Nolani. We're both students from the, University of, uh, from the University of Chicago, and we are interning here at Education USA this summer. And we're really excited to present this webinar on American college life and culture for you guys. Um, all right, let's, let's get started. The, yeah. So. All right, let's get started. So just firstly, a little bit about Education USA. Education USA is a global network of advising centers that is run by the US State Department. Um, our goal is to offer unbiased, accurate, and comprehensive information about the full range of accredited US higher education institutions so that students from around the world uh, have the information that they need to help them apply to and attend American universities. Um, we also offer free access to introductory information on U.S. study. Across Mexico, there are 25 Education USA advising centers. So if you are curious about which advising center is closest to you, please go to educationusa.state.gov. Now, without any further ado, let's begin the meet of the webinar. Okay, so we're going to talk a little bit about college life and what you would expect studying in the U.S. on a college campus. So if you're an undergrad in the U.S., you're probably going to be living in college housing. So this could look like dorms, it could look like apartments. In dormitories, you can have a single, you can be sharing a double, a triple, which is with two other roommates, or be in a larger suite or apartment, which often has a living room, maybe a small kitchen, a common space, maybe even a bathroom. A room in a college dorm typically includes a bed, a desk, free Wi-Fi, a closet space, and a bookshelf. You might also have resident assistants or resident deans. The names of these positions vary across campuses, but basically they're adults that live near campus or on campus for you to turn to if you ever need an immediate, an immediate help with any problem you have. Um, for going to college, we recommend that you only bring the essential clothes and belongings. You can always buy extras when you're there. So when it comes to roommates, you will, if you have a double or a triple, you will be put with either an American student or an international student. Um, it's always highly recommended to get to know them before you move in. This can be done over Facebook. Your university might even send you an email with their email for you to contact them beforehand. Um, this makes it easy for you to agree on rules and chores before you start living together. Um, it's really important, um, obviously, to communicate with each other when you're annoyed as to avoid conflict. Um, a few tips that we have is asking your roommates before you bring friends home or keeping the shared living spaces clean. Um, give them space, personal space is always appreciated, and just be friendly. So when it comes to dining, dining usually looks like a buffet style in, in your dining halls. The menu tends to change daily. Um, there tends to be a variety of foods so that you don't ever get old. Um, the meal schedule looks a little bit different in the U.S., it's a little bit earlier than what you might be used to. Breakfast is normally served between 7.30 and 7.30 a.m. Lunch is normally served between 11 and 1.30, and dinner normally between 5 and 7.30 p.m. Although it's worth noting that some colleges also have a fourth meal or a late meal option um, that is available later at night, and some colleges will only offer this during exam week, but this varies from campus to campus. All right, so in the United States, there are several different uh, structures that your classes can have, but it's important to note that you can plan your own schedule with any of these, and you can also choose your own courses. You are likely to have academic advisors who will help you plan your schedule to ensure that you are taking um, the courses that you need to when you need to so that you are on path to graduate, but most courses are offered, oh, but most courses are offered um, multiple times um, throughout the week. So you can choose what days work best for you and what times work best. So if you're a morning person, you can get all of your 
classes done then, but if you like to sleep in, you can plan it so that all of your classes are in the afternoon. Now, there are several different structures that classes can have in the United States. They can either be discussion-based seminars, uh, such as the one shown in the picture. In discussion-based seminars, usually you will be assigned readings, and then you will be expected to come to class having done that reading, and you will then be discussing the reading and will be answering questions that your professor asks you to form a conversation. So you'll be presenting your own ideas and you'll be responding to the ideas of others. And in these classes, you will be graded for participation. So even if you're doing all of the reading, if you aren't speaking in class, you might still not get a good grade. So it's very important that you come prepared, but also that you have confidence and that you just share your ideas. Um, usually there are also essays that go along with these classes. There are also lecture-based classes, uh, which are usually much larger in size, whereas discussion-based seminars are usually between one and two dozen students. <coughs> Sorry. So between maybe like 12 and 25 students. Lecture-based classes can have hundreds of students in a large hall. Your professor, every class, will give you a lecture, and you will be expected to take notes. And the entirety of your grade will be based on a series of tests, exams, or essays. Um, that are due and spaced throughout the quarter or semester. There are, however, also laboratory courses um, where you will be expected to come to a lab, conduct experiments, and then write up lab reports, which in addition to your finals and exams will make up your grade. It's worth noting that there are a number of resources, academic resources, available to you in the US. Uh, your professor will hold office hours in which they will be available to answer any questions that you may have about the course material, to go over possible essay ideas, and to otherwise talk about course material. Many classes also have teacher assistants, which are usually upperclassmen students or graduate level students um, who assist the teacher in teaching each class and grading papers. You can also meet with them outside of class if you have questions. And Campuses also have libraries, which are a great place uh, not only to go to check out books, but also to study um, and to meet with people if you want to uh, prepare for a class. These are just some pictures of a laboratory style class and a lecture based class. So you can see in the top left, there's a picture of students conducting a lab, whereas in the bottom right, you can see a larger lecture hall um, in which a professor is giving a lecture to several hundred students who are taking notes. Next, diversity on American college campuses. So um, while uh, the majority of most student body populations is white, um, this is not always the case and it does depend, for, uh, and it does vary from school to school. So if we look at the two graphics at the bottom of this page, we can see that while white students make up around 78% of the student body at the University of Missouri, Columbia, they only make up 14.3% of the student body at the University of California, Irvine. Uh, there are also historically black universities that may be predominantly African American uh, in the makeup of their student body. So it really does depend um, based on where you're going. And uh, as mentioned, some schools are majority minority, which means that a majority of the student body are comprised of minorities in the United States. International students usually make up between 5% and 20% of the student body. This varies from university to university, though. Um, and there are, also, there are often organizations for students of specific ethnic and cultural backgrounds that are available to allow them to continue to stay in touch with their heritage. Um, so these are just some pictures to show that diversity. It's worth noting that American college campuses are often very diverse in terms not just of race and ethnicity, but also in terms of religion. You are likely to meet uh, students who are Muslim, Jewish, Hindu, in addition to various Christian denominations, as well as even Buddhist students and other religious minorities. But it's also worth noting that there is also a diversity uh, in socioeconomic backgrounds in most American student bodies. 
So you will meet students, some of whom are come from very affluent households and some of whom come from very low income households. And there's a large range in between those extremes. So just know that you'll be meeting many students from a very broad array of walks of life. Now at college campuses, there are many extracurricular activities for you to choose from. Sports are often very popular, especially at large state schools, where large, part, uh, large portions of the student body will turn up to sporting events. Most campuses also have debate and mock trial teams. Uh, these teams will often prepare, write cases, and then go and compete in tournaments. These are good if you're interested in law or politics, but many students from other backgrounds, including science and math, often do them as well. In modern United Nations, you pretend you represent a country or a historical figure, and you go to conferences around the country and sometimes even around the world, and you compete against delegates from other universities. This is very good if you're interested in history, politics, international relations, law, or science, since there are committees on science and even finance. Um, student newspapers are found on almost every campus and will usually cover um, the events occurring on the university's campus. Most campuses have political organizations. These will often be chapters of the Democratic Party and the Republican Party, uh, but there will also be nonpartisan political organizations devoted to specific um, activism and mobilization on certain nonpartisan issues. Um, such as, for example, Im immigrant rights, these groups aren't partisan. Um, there are a number of pre-professional clubs. Uh, so for example, if you're interested in consulting or investment, there are often consulting clubs or investment clubs for students interested in pursuing these fields. There's also many, many options if you are interested in the arts and music. Um, for example, there's theater, dance, orchestras, bands, acapella, as well as many ways for you to pursue other forms of art like painting. Uh, there are also community service organizations that will allow you to interact with the community outside of the campus um, in ways that are helpful to its members. And last but not least, there's Greek life. Um, these include fraternities and sororities. And this participation in Greek life varies from campus to campus, some campuses uh, Greek life is a huge part of the culture, whereas in others, it's a relatively weak part of the culture. Um, so just do some research online about how prevalent it is at the university you're interested in studying at before you go there. Um, however, it's also worth noting that while fraternities and sororities um, obviously will give you a social community and often organized parties, many fraternities, and especially sororities, have philanthropic or professional affiliations. So there are, for example, business sororities that help their members um, build connections to go into business. These are just some pictures. In the top left, there is Model United Nations. In the bottom left, uh, there is a dance group called Maya at our university, the University of Chicago. It's a fusion dance group that does a lot of really cool stuff. In the top right, you can see representatives from various sororities and fraternities. And in the bottom right, you can see both some student athletes and a sample student paper. Um, outside of extracurricular activities, there are still many other things to do on a college campus. Many campuses hold homecoming celebrations and football games for visiting alumni. Uh, these are typically in the fall, although this can vary. And this is a great way for you to bond with other current students and get to meet some former students to see where some former students of your university have wound up. You can also invite your family to visit you and you can host them. If you have a younger sibling, they can come visit you and meet your friends to see what college is like. Um, you can visit a college friend's hometown. This is a great way for you to see other parts of the US. Um, so if your roommate, if you become close friends with your roommate, um, maybe trying to go home with them for a weekend or over a break so that you can just see what their hometown is like can give you, is, is a great way to better understand American culture. Many universities will host concerts um, and some universities with larger stadiums will even host very big name artists. Uh, for example, 
Ohio State University this past year had a Beyonce concert. Um, and even smaller universities like ours, the University of Chicago, does have an annual music festival. Uh, you can also explore the city or town that your school is in. Um, college towns and cities usually have a lot of things meant for college students that you can do. And you can also always take a trip or a road trip with friends to a nearby national park to see some of the US's natural beauty. Okay, so now we're jumping into celebrations and customs that you will see while studying in the US. Um, so the first and biggest holiday that you'll be observing once you get to college will be Halloween. Uh, you've probably seen these celebrations in movies, but it's always on October 31st, the last day of October. Um, traditionally, kids go from door to door to trick or treat, and they're dressed up. Teens and adults also dress up and have, sometimes have their own parties. Um, some traditions include carving jack-o'-lanterns, like what you see in the bottom left corner, um, and people just have a good time. Um, one thing to note is that a lot of times universities will have their own celebrations on campus for Halloween, so um, sometimes your university will have a costume contest or an event. Um, they'll, a lot of times they'll have free food, and so this is one really good way to meet people, um, to go with some friends, and to just take a break and relax from all you have to do at school. Some universities will also open up dormitories and allow children from the neighborhoods to come trick or treat in the dormitories. And this can be a great way to interact with the children and families in the communities around your campus. Next is Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving is always celebrated the last Thursday of November. So after Halloween, this will probably be the second major holiday that you observe while during the school year in the US. Thanksgiving is a feast with family and friends to give thanks to what you have um, in your life that you're thankful for and grateful for. It was originally a harvest feast that was shared by Native Americans and English pilgrims who first settled in Massachusetts. Um, but since then, it has come to be a holiday celebrated throughout the US. Um, on Thanksgiving, there is a very famous Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade in New York City. Um, pictured in the bottom right, you can see giant, uh, giant parade balloons, like there's one with Charlie Brown, for example. Um, and there are also a number of football games on Thanksgiving every year that people often watch. Um, and usually in the feast, some traditional foods include turkey, mashed potatoes, cranberry sauce, pecan pie, pumpkin pie, um, and also stuffing and gravy for the turkey. Um, many students will try to go home to visit their families during this period and most schools will give you either that Thursday and Friday and then the Saturday, Sunday weekend off or that entire week off to visit family. However, if you aren't able to return home to visit family, don't worry. There will be many other students in the same situation and oftentimes students will join together to cook feasts themselves and it can be a great way to bond and celebrate it and make new friends over, over this break. Um, the peanuts are a great way to learn about American holidays and traditions. Uh, the peanuts were originally a comic strip and then a series of cartoon specials featuring characters like Charlie Brown, Snoopy, and Friends, and they ran from 1950 to 2000. The holiday specials are popular and explain American holiday traditions. So for example, if you're curious about how Thanksgiving came to be and how it's often celebrated, you can watch a Charlie Brown Thanksgiving. Um, other classics include It's the Great Pumpkin Charlie Brown and A Charlie Brown Christmas. These are still very popular. Some families have traditions of watching them around each holiday each year, and you'll often see um, like shirts or other pieces of merchandise with characters on them. Hanukkah is a Jewish holiday that is celebrated in December, um, although it can start in late November. Um, so this is around uh, can start anywhere between when Thanksgiving is and even the end of December. It's an eight-day Jewish festival um, that's celebrated with the ceremonial lighting of a menorah and the eating of traditional foods, including latkes and sofganiot. Um, even if you aren't Jewish, you can still take part in celebrations, as most campuses will have a Hillel chapter, um, or which is a Jewish student organization, or a Ror Chabad Jewish center. Um, and usually these organizations will lead celebrations, not just of Hanukkah, but also of Sukkot, Passover, and weekly Shabbat dinners. 
um, that will allow you to learn about Jewish traditions and holidays if you are so interested. And they will also sometimes lead trips to Israel for students interested. Um, now, the United States is very diverse. So while it is still predominantly Christian, there are sizable um, minority populations of Jews, Muslims, Hindus, Buddhists, um, and other religious minorities. So you will often find that on campuses, there are student religious and cultural organizations that will lead celebrations of the holidays celebrated by religious minorities. However, these celebrations will usually be open to all students. So for example, Indian student organizations will often lead holy celebrations, which is a Hindu celebration uh, characterized by the throne of colorful uh, powders. Well, not characterized by that, but that's part of the celebration. You can see that in the bottom right hand corner. And Muslim student organizations will often organize celebrations of Eid and Ramadan that are open to all students. So I highly encourage you to check out some of these religious celebrations, even if you aren't from these religious minorities. They're still a great way to make friends and learn more about other cultures. So now about spring festivities. Um, a few that we celebrate in the US, well, one thing that we celebrate <laughs> in the US is the Super Bowl. Um, the Super Bowl is one of the most watched games um, out of the entire world. And it's an American football championship, for those who are unaware. It's the last Sunday of January or the first Sunday of February. Um, a lot of people, even if they're not interested in football, like to partake in the parties that go with it. It's a really good opportunity to just eat with your friends and bond, watch the, the halftime show. Um, that's the main reason why people watch it. And also the funny commercials. People say that the Super Bowl produces the best commercials out of the entire year. Um, so definitely worth a watch, even if you're not super into football. Um, another thing that we celebrate is St. Patrick's Day. It's on March 17th. Um, it's originally a celebration of Irish and Irish American heritage, but that doesn't exclude anyone from participating. It's traditional to wear the color green and decorate with shamrocks. Um, one tradition is that if you're not wearing green, you're allowed to be pinched by someone else. And so. Um, it, Make sure you're wearing green on March 17th. Uh, that's another reason to have good food, hang out with friends, some beer, um, if you're of age. And now going on to the 4th of July. Uh, the 4th of July happens after your school year ends, but a lot of people hang around for internships or they're still in the US over the summer. Um, so it's worth noting, it's the American Independence Day. It's a national holiday, so everybody gets it off. Um, it's also it's often celebrated with parades, with fairs, with barbecue, with fireworks. Um, generally, the the weather is really nice at that time, and so a lot of people are enjoying being outside. As you can see by the pictures, people are enjoying barbecues on the grass. Um, oftentimes, if you live outside of a city, there will be a nearby fair or a nearby carnival um, that lasts a few days or maybe. Uh, a few weekends or a few weeks. Um, you can walk around, play some games, order some food. Sometimes there'll be a Ferris wheel, some rides. Um, it's a really good way to just experience typical American food um, and see how we celebrate one of the biggest holidays of the year. So moving on to customs. Um, it's important to note that you're expected to arrive on time to classes and events. So that means if you have a 1 p.m. class, you are not arriving at 1.10 p.m. You are arriving at 12.50 or 12.55. Um, especially if your class is big, you don't always know if you're going to get a spot. You don't know what, always know if you're going to be able to hear your professor or um, be able to concentrate in the back. And so it's important that you show that you're investing in your, your education by showing up on time to these events. Um, for tipping, um, I'm pretty sure this is mainly a U.S. thing, but you're expected to leave a tip for service. So that could be a haircut, that could be going out to a restaurant. Um, when you go out to a restaurant, you should leave a 15 to 20% tip. So if your bill is $10, you're leaving $1.50 to $2 for the server. Um, also, it's important to remember that we're not on the metric system. So it may, take a little while to get used to, but um, 
just ask your American friends to help you out whenever you need to measure something or you don't know how much a pound is or you're going to the grocery store, um, but you'll get the hang of it. So for greetings, handshakes are common and formal and professional in business settings when first meeting others. Um, and along with the handshake, make sure you're making eye contact. In more casual settings, a smile, a wave, saying hi, maybe even a hug, depending on who you're, you're greeting. Um, kissing on the cheek is less common in the U.S. Um, sometimes if people are familiar with other cultures, they'll greet people with kissing on the cheek, but that's generally not the default. Okay, so we covered all the content that we have on American culture um, and college life. Join us next week for uh, our talk on SAT and ACT testing. We will also be mentioning what you need to know about the TOEFL and a little bit about the IELTS. Um, so make sure you tune in at this time next week to learn all you need to know about standardized testing for you to apply to colleges. Now, thank you so much for sticking around and we will be answering any questions. So if you have any questions, please just type them in the comment bar um, on the side of the live stream here. So let's, how did that turn on the camera? No? Okay. Um, <laughs> all right, great. Um, all right, it looks like we don't have any questions at this time. <laughs> um, we'll stick around for just a minute. So if you have any questions, please type them um, as soon as possible, and we'll try to answer them. But if not, thank you again for joining us. Um, we'll see you next week. Great. All right. Thank you guys so much. Bye.